I'm pretty sure that like Slardar plus Snapfire probably has got to have like a 65% win rate because it probably super stomps every lane. It's probably so good. Lion or Disruptor for easy support MR? Neither really. Like they're both okay, but the better, if you're playing a five, the better heroes are probably like Lich. And if you're a four, Snapfire's or Enchantress is the best. Make Bash Duration scale harder. Yeah, you could do that, I guess. Like, make the Bash Duration lower. Like, 0.75 at level 1 or something. That's a, certainly a way to do it. Am I playing after I watch the games? Yeah, probably. Thinking about Sniper mid, even though it's not good. Even though there's plenty of heroes that beat him. So, we got a Oracle pick here, which is a bit weird. What does this do? Save less track, save potentially IO. Magic resistance against E Blade combo. Save somebody that they go on. Kind of weird. But it does help make less track more invulnerable, which is good. Like, even if you fate seed a less track, it doesn't matter because he doesn't need to attack, you know? You're just making him magic immune, and he can still do damage with spells. Um, Elder Titan is typically good against heroes like Morphling. Maybe they protect themselves a little bit, but it's also good team fight setup. Beastmaster and then Kunkka. Beastmaster for setup, disables. Lane's pretty good against Morphling. Nah, maybe not. I feel like you can just kill the boars easily. That's it, if it's safe lane, of course. They pick Kunkka. Probably doing Kunkka mid now. Oracle heals IOI IO equals Ashtia. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't talk about that. That's fair. And they pick another here that looks like a mid, DK. And they pick OD. OD is very good against high armor tankiness heroes. So against OD, it's good. Against Morphling, it's good. He can save people from X combos. OD was a really, really good pick here. Like, super, super good. Saves against Konka combos. Saves against Elder Chain combos. Saves against Rubik combos. Saves against Dragonite combos. This is all like a very, like, setup and kill type lineup. So having the power to save them is really good. And then having two cores that match up pretty well is also good. Magic damage against Morph is great. Magic damage against Dragonite and Kunkka seems pretty decent too. It's going to be an offlane Dragonite. Okay, with the fucking ugliest items I have ever seen. He's pulling the slacks over here. What is this shit? A Tomba Man Morphling. The weird set. Spirit Vessel must against Morph. Uh, it is not. It is definitely good. But it's not... Spirit Vessel is kind of falling out of favor, from what I've seen. I think, like, defensive or teamfight items feel a little bit better now. He's gonna go Soul Ring here. It's quite tanky at this point. It's kind of a cool dueling, though. Minus damage with Breathe Fire and minus damage with Fade Bolt. Could potentially work against a lot of heroes. Go for the smoke, huh? Okay. I mean, they're really fast because of IO Lesh. Guarantees a split earth. That's part of the benefit of this gank early on, is that it takes a while for Fortune's End to hit, but if it lasts for two and a half seconds and you're on really fast heroes that are boosted by an IO, you can easily catch up to the guy. Guarantee another two second stun, so that's like four and a half seconds of disable. So even though they have like pretty weak right clicks, it really wasn't that bad. And obviously they had Inner Beast too. Ten more attack speed, which is going to help Curl right click a little bit better. And then he picks up Orb Venom. Since Beastmaster does decent damage, he can now right click uh, Orb of Venom really good against Morphling because Morph is really slow. So when you do get trade advantage or trade moments, then you can actually chase him and force him to use waveforms. So that's all kind of cool. And Puppy will do his best to stabilize this lane. Instantly dispelled. He is. They kind of really fucked themselves with this ET pick, man. They picked it after Oracle. So then Nigma gets to lane Oracle against the ET. He instantly gets Astral Spirit, instantly dispelled. So now he's just a regular ass hero, aka garbage. 
Mind Control's over here beating the shit out of my Tumba Man. So Nigma looks to be extremely well poised in this lane because of the Orb of Venom advantage and the Banished advantage against ET. And then in the mid lane again, they have OD, which is very good against the secret setup heroes. And then on the top lane, whatever, it's fine. It's off lane DK, who fucking cares? Run away, puppy. You cannot do anything for another 11 seconds. Oracle is zoning you. Tell me his booty beat up. He's gonna block this camp. He uh, put a sentry down to make sure it wasn't blocked. But by blocking it, now Puppy is forced to contest because now he can't pull. If Puppy can't zone, then he's like, well, at least I can pull. Well, now he can't pull because Crow moved over. So because of this, he's straight up screwed. He's going to be over here fighting without using his spell because that's literally all he can do. And what's, Pup what's Crow going to do? He's going to watch him. Go ahead. Bring the spirit back. Go ahead. Go ahead. If he needs to, of course. There you go, Puppy has done his job. This looks awful for Puppy. Not fun to play at all. How's the rest of the lanes going? About even. We all will take... Oh well. Oh. A little better damage though. Did I not sleep enough? Yo, I had, I had some crazy anxiety dream last night. I imagined that I was staying in a hotel room I'll see if I can remember this, sorry for the tangent. I was staying in a hotel room, but I had to catch an international flight, and I was like, and then I realized that I only had an hour until my flight, and I looked around the room, and there was a lot of stuff in my room. I, for some reason, I was like partially moved in or something, so I had like a lot of my stuff in the hotel room, so I knew or realized that I didn't have enough time, because I knew I was in like Los Angeles somewhere about to go to a flight, but I didn't have enough time to bring my stuff from the hotel room to my house. So I was like pulled between th two things. I had a bunch of stuff in the room that I didn't want to throw away, including my clothes and personal objects and stuff. But my flight was in an hour. So it's like I could either like, and my bags weren't completely packed. It was like partially packed, but not efficiently. So I was like trying to figure out which stuff do I take to the hotel or to, to the flight? Do I skip my flight to take a different flight? Do I have time to, oh, it was, it was stressful. And then I woke up. Anyway, so that's, maybe that's why I'm a little tired. That shit was, that shit was stressful. It was an international flight as well, and you need to be, typically, you need to be at the airport approximately one to two hours early, so. I forgot to mention that part, but that definitely added stress to it. Oh, Puppy did something in his lane! He interrupted the pull. Congratulations to Puppy. And guess what? His small camp will not spawn. Good for him. Yo, is it Friday yet? I want to play D&D. No wait, Dragonite offlane having a bad time. Pretty sure somebody asked me on stream the other night if Dragonite offlane was good. It's not. Did that look good, guys? Did that look good in any way? You know. Maybe Secret got up 2-0 in, in the specify, and they're like, Fuck it. We're the best. We can pick Elder Titan into Oracle. We can pick Offlane Dragonite. This is incredible, just how fucking ugly this is. I'm not gonna lie. This is so bad. Everything is wrong here. It's got a, like, this is like a slack set. Genuinely. He's like, let me... It's like everything is a different color, actually. My god. I used to use this helmet. My portrait's not animated? Is this because it's a replay? I don't know where it is. Animate portraits? I'm not sure where it is. 
Probably just a replay bug. I like to have it on you. He's moving his little jaw a little bit. It's probably just a replay bug. Everyone getting waveform these days. He's like, look at all this damage I have! I'm so excited! I mean, he's got 12 last hits. It could be worse. Get beat up. This IO is zoning Dragonite right now, I guess. Oh, he got so much movement speed, I forgot about this. I guess offlane Dragonite's better than it used to be. Because of the base movement speed. He used to be like 285 or something. But he got like 10 movement speed, which gets... Wait, didn't they change this so that you lose movement speed? I'm pretty sure they did, right? Uh, I gotta find this, sorry. Dragon Knight. Base movement speed increased by 10. Oh, you, so it's a net, net positive 5 with your ulti. For some reason I was thinking like you lost movement speed with your ulti or something. But So, net positive of 10. But only five when you use ult. Okay. But that probably put him from 295 to 305 is what we're seeing. So countered. Good luck, scrubs. Can't kill off lane DK. I mean, that's one good thing is that he's just really hard to kill, I guess. He just buys two bracers, and because it's like I mean, even if they weren't magic damage, they'd probably still have a lot of trouble killing him. I suppose. He's got boots now. I guess this hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. But it did look pretty bad there for a moment. How the heck did they get a kill here? Okay. Trying to decide whether to waveform here. Ooh, didn't get the range. He didn't get the banish. Oh, he does get the banish. Is he gonna ulti this? What a stomp time. He would have killed him for sure if he ultis. But I think he wanted the ulti to end, because then he would have had an extra, what, 120 mana? It's 0.4 per 150, so. So, Astral does 3, so 120 times 0.4, is that like... Is that 30 damage? 48 damage? 40%? Oh yeah. 25% would be, would have been 30 damage. So, he would have gotten 48 more damage by waiting till the Astral finish, I think, unless it gives it to you as you cast it. I don't know why he waited. Maybe he thought he was a little bit too high HP. I thought he was going to go for it, personally. It's got a lot of mana compared to Morphling. Morphling has really low base in and really low int gain. It's his stat weakness actually. But you buy so many stat items that give you all stats that it, it doesn't seem obvious. You end up getting a lot. He, he could have done that better. He could have been full HP. Um, you end up getting a lot of int from all the stat items you buy. He gives him the briefcase. Is it infused? It's not even infused. I have an infused one, I'll let you guys know. What a nice pull. Safe lane tower died probably to buy Diabolic Edict stuff. Meteor Hammer Dragonite? Interesting. Hooray! 
Interesting. You know, guys, I've just always been a huge fan of Dragonite Offlane. I don't know what it is about it, but it it just gets me going. It makes me excited to play Dota. I think it's cool. Just a big fan of this. So the reason this is cool, think about Nyx Assassin, what he does. Everybody's been freaking out about Nyx Assassin because they're like, oh man, stun duration increase. Impale lasts for like what? Almost three seconds or something like that? Yeah, 3.1 seconds stun duration with Impale when you get the talent. But look at our boy Dragon Knight here. Stun duration 3.25 seconds. He stuns for more than Nyx Assassin does. That means on Dragon Knight, you can use Dragon Tail level 4 and guarantee a Meteor Hammer. Because it takes 2 seconds plus... Sorry, 2.5 seconds plus Land Hammer 0.5. So if you do a stun into Meteor Hammer, you can do the combo on Dragon Knight. So you're basically this tanky son of a bitch in the off lane. And yeah, things are going to be a little insufferable. They're going to kill you a little bit. They're going to pressure the shit out of you. But... You will buy Meteor Hammer, and you will have stupid HP, regen, and the ability to push towers with both your ulti and Meteor Hammer. And you're slightly limited on lane pushing, because you have to get so many Dragon, dragon Blood levels, but... The Meteor Hammer really makes this viable. Because normally if you're playing like offlane or something, I'm like... I mean, you're going to get some gold, but you're not going to accelerate super fast. And then you're going to, what, transition into, what, right-clicking? But Meteor Hammer unlocks everything. Tons of damage if you can combo it, which you can because you have a stun. It allows you to pressure tower so much easier. You don't have to use your ulti every time. You'd rather save your ulti for team fights typically. But both of them together, it's like even more tower pushing. It actually is quite ingenious. He will obviously use it here because he's here and he can, but. I'm gonna attack these all one by one. Attack this once every five seconds to do 100 magic damage. Barely stops moving. Just stuns and runs. Now he will pull these together so that he can kill them faster. Look at this incredible damage. 20 per second. Lost it. Oh, we pinged him. Puppy criticizing his players. What is this shit? You fucking missed. One more miss last hit and you're off the team's eye. I'm sure that's what happened. Yep, he got ultied over here. Oh, he's invis, okay. And... Boop! This is a good matchup for multiple reasons. The ulti kill. It's very easy nowadays. How much int does he even have? 34. He's got 100. I don't know if it does more or less now. I'm not sure. Than it used to before it was int based. I was like, who's he tethering to? Oh, thank god. Alright, we're good, guys. I can, I, can, I can actually watch the rest of this game now. Without throwing up. Max is dragon blood. More armor. The Sanj Rush against the OD. It's kind of cool that Konka is like such a strong hero with his base that it just doesn't fucking matter what items he buys first. It's like he doesn't have to worry about like farming slow or anything. He's just like, I have fucking Tidebringer. What is the problem? I do damage. That's all that matters. He just does so much damage to this thing. Extra regen is kind of nice too, of course. But 40 damage talent, it's like you can buy any item and you're good. He's gotten some damage in. They're relocating on him. Ooh, we got in front of with the tether. Not looking good for Zai. What is looking good is this meteor hammer that's on the way though.
they just don't stop. He's doing it! He's leveling it up. You probably should have just kept walking with him. Okay, never mind. He's fucking dead. Yeah, he's maxing it out now so that he can actually land the meter hammer combo. Maybe his eye was like, hey, puppy, can I play Dragon at offlane? Puppy was like, fuck it, we're up 2 0. You can do whatever the fuck you want. This is dirty as fuck, dude. This is so dirty. It's like, if you, there's literally nothing he can do about it. He's got Faded Brooch, for God's sake. The man was like, fuck, give me Faded Brooch so that the ulti doesn't do as much damage to me. And he still gets blown up. He is completely Agility Morph, though. In, in uh, you know, Weeha's defense or whatever. Dude has four, 580 HP. He's got the vision. Goodbye. Extremely dead. But, uh, still. It's desperate, dude. It's an HP item right here. And Zai's like, please, God, let me finish my fucking item so I can actually do something. So much damage. What a good torrent. Zai does seem to like the tanky offlaners. It's coming. This core is like, hey, give me that lane. Okay. He still went back for adaptive strike. He's ready. An entire creep wave destroyed. Oh, he's just going back. He went song. He's going song to radiance. Maybe it does matter what items you get. Radiance is definitely gonna help a lot more, especially against like Beastmaster type heroes. Aqua is found. No neutral items on Miracle yet. No neutral items here. They have no neutral lane? What's going on? Because they haven't hit very many neutrals or something. He's got eggs now. That's good. Give that to uh, track. Wait, wait, wait. Did I hear that? Incredible skill from Zai on the bot lane. That's okay. It was a weak play, but his meteor hammer a moment before that was quite good, so can't blame him too much. Yo, Philosopher's Stone in the graveyard, man, basically. I even it's not so popular anymore. Oh, shit, did he just get meteor hammered? I missed the first meteor hammer on a hero. Dunk. That worked quite well, actually. Because he threw it. It's like the, the sun comes out and he instantly casts it. So the delay time is quite good. He got like 0.3 seconds of uh, stun before that even hit. Gets the stun fall up. Obviously, he's invulnerable entirely to this damage. Due to the, the, the banish and the, the oracle. You know, this is kind of funny. Because I talked about this in the draft, but because they have all this like stun setup, which was obvious, but I didn't think they were also going to go like 
Dragonite and a Meteor Hand, which further counters the combo. But boy, can he push side lanes. Uh oh. He's coming back. It's pretty fucking ugly. I must say. Oh, he went back for Halberd after all? Okay. Oh, he's changing his build. No Radiance. Um. I would argue that his thought is probably if I'm up against like a Leshrac who does a lot of magic and a OD who just does so much pure damage that he needs Halberd right now because they're getting behind maybe. Maybe they're worried about the death ball. He's like I need to be able to stop them now. And if I go Radiance it's decent but the fights aren't just like I can stand in the middle of them. It's too dangerous for him. So maybe it's safer to go Shadow Blade to just do a lot of physical damage because maybe they're their armor is not going to be that great. Oh, ganking the Alpha Wolf. Oh, this is worth 200 gold if you can get it. It's going to live. It was a good try, though. Thank God. Still naked. Now they're death pushing. Pretty vanish. Oh, GH, okay. Letting him boat was a little bit rough, but I mean, this is just hawk abuse that they're using, basically. Now Dragonite offlane's like, I'm Dragonite offlane. I don't do anything, but I do have a Meteor Hammer, which I like. But is it very effective right now? It's a little bit one, one hit wonder, you know? It's like he can do one thing really good. Disable into a kill. Oh. This actually looks okay. Look at the stun duration. That was quite good. Now he's like, oh fuck! He's fully healed! He did almost nothing! I mean, he got him to like half HP. But that was it. That was all that was gonna happen. 20 attack speed, hell yeah. Alright. Um, 0, 4, and 3. It is cool though, I must say. Let's see by next, I don't fucking know. See, part of the problem is that like, I think this build would have been okay if they're on the enemy side of the map, genuinely. But because Nigma took this advantage and now they're just like playing on enemy side of the map and pressuring, it's like Secret has to go out and fight. They can't just like passively farm. Whereas if he if he's got Meteor Hammer and he can like push waves in and Meteor Hammer towers and creep waves or like use his ulti to damage a tower while Meteor Hammering it, then, then his hero becomes useful. But now, like, but a Nyx normally in this circumstance would be fine, right? Because it's like they can still do the Meteor Hammer combo, but they can also participate in ganks and fights. Dragonite can't fucking do that because his ulti isn't good for this, basically. It's only good for being like, I'm going to actually have a range stun. And that's it. It's not very good at the rest of it. It's like, oh, he only does 122 damage, which is okay, but he doesn't attack that fast. It's not, it's not good DPS, obviously. But having Vendetta is great. Invis can find a kill, burst, break. Lots of good options. But all he is right now is a fucking Meteor Hammer and a tanky dude. And that's it. And he's only got a single target stun, so he can't even AoE stun. It's very one-dimensional. And they have the perfect heroes to counter it. Banish. Save. Magic Immune. Save. It's just like... This is not the game for Dragonite offlane, basically. They would need to be winning a bit. That way he could play on the other side of the map for this to be better. Because if he can then... Be on the enemy side of the map, pressure towers like they're doing on the dire side. Then he can transition his items into something more like pipe or blink dagger or other things. But he hasn't been able to do that because Nigma is the one on the enemy side of the map. Hooray! Thank you for the sub. Happy birthday, also. So I was like, I've done everything. I was going to X. Cool. 
think that makes more sense here. Not that it's going well, but uh... Oh no, he got side too. Yeah, this is not the game for offlane Dragonite, guys. It's really not. JH is like, I cannot allow them to have bounty runes. That's cool. Use relocate just for it. It costs a TP on Oracle as well, of course, but. Now they're pressuring, so they're basically trying to rush any items that can actually help them win a fight now. Because they're quite behind. But like almost everything about the secret draft was just countered right off the bat. Hope he kind of put himself in a bad position. Attack speed plus waveform range. He got Morbid Mask. Two hit creeps. Whereas Nisha went bottle, but. His defense, he was safely in Morphling, so but getting a bottle will sink it me nearly as good. Oh no, offlane Dragon Knight! You know what's really bad about this build though that I wish made it not bad was that you kind of have to max Dragon Tail second for the Meteor Hammer to work and that feels really garbage because Meteor Hammer is a good mana regen items, 3 mana per second. He's also got a 3 mana regen talent right here. If anything I would argue that getting a 3 mana regen talent is actually a waste if you're going Meteor Hammer personally because you really don't need 6 mana per second when you only have a level 1 Breathe Fire. I'd almost rather he maxes Breathe Fire faster. But if he wants to do the Dragon Tail into Meteor Hammer, it needs to be maxed out is the problem. It has to be maxed out. Otherwise, the window is too small, and somebody like Oracle could Fate Seedict himself, or OD could Banish, or Isle could Tether away. So he, like, gimps his ability to farm rapidly. He relies it entirely on Meteor Hammer, when ideally, in a perfect world, he wouldn't need to max out Dragon Tail all the way, and you could have, like, four Breathe Fires and Meteor Hammer. Because if you have two AoEs, now you can farm a lot faster. You can Breathe Fire one wave, Meteor Hammer the next. Or Meteor Hammer one wave, and then, you know, or Breathe Fire one wave entirely, get it to the tower, then Meteor Hammer the tower. Having two AoEs definitely helps a lot, so it's kind of depressing. Um, I get that he kind of needed to max Dragon Blood, but I'm looking at this build, and I'm just kind of like, I wish he had more levels. So I, I think this is, like, a cool Zai idea or whatever, but... At the least in this game, it is not good. As beautiful as it is, and as terrible as it is. He should desperately trying to finish his eggs, because it is a very good eggs. Puppy pushing out side lanes. No boat buff. Good halberd usage. Good try. I say Weeha is very good at this obnoxious Ags OD crap. Very rough game to play with the Morphling. Stone. Don't see that too often. It will increase his survivability though. It's a lot of HP. He can use the active. He's getting a lot of mana regen from Io. This is kind of a cool combo. Io Lesh. And unlike a lot of other carries, he actually just does tons of... It's like your timing window is just so much earlier and your, your impact as a carry is just so much higher. Because... Because they have... Uh, Edict is going to destroy towers, and if a fight starts, he's got all these other spells that are really effective. He doesn't need a lot of items to do, he just needs levels, basically. So by bidding, picking up a Yule Scepter and BOTs and now a Bloodstone, it's like it solves all of his problems with Io on his backing. A lot of other carries don't basically, they, they don't do damage based on how much mana they have. They do damage based on how many items they have, and that takes time. Oh god, I should be careful. 
don't want to pull my my cables where my footstool is are kind of shittily wired. But, um, it's very cool. And now they can basically force them to do this shit. His combo, no! Zai, no! Oh, he's alive. Give me the sun! Well, that's successful as far as I'm concerned. He accidentally made tranquils. Side doesn't quite have eggs yet. This game is very over, I think. Banished to interrupt his meteor hammer. He actually might live here. No longer has his ultimate. I think. They will run top. This is a really cool draft in window by Enigma. It's very cool. Odie is the perfect hero for the game and the heroes. Clinical, dude. Fucking clinical. 